intellectual fashion. And here really brings uh, another issue to the, to the forefront and one I think is worthy of further consideration, consideration by the police department and by city leaders. And that is the question of how much information do we need after a high profile incident and when. This issue has bedeviled law enforcement, not just the city of Fullerton, for a long time. There is clearly inherent tension between the public's legitimate interest in learning initial facts versus the potential that preliminary information gathered early in the process may not prove to be accurate. As in this case, while there are documents that indicate the treating physicians had not ruled out possible factors for the officer at the time this information was disclosed, the event of diagnosis was apparently there were no broken things. In our view, it would have been advisable in this case to one or two, one or two things either delay the release of information about this issue in diagnoses were more definitive, or to expressly make clear to the public that the information was extremely tentative and subject to further assessment by doctors. A side issue, but important issue, is what are the intimation, although this wasn't stated, but the intimation and inference that somehow these injuries um, to the officers were caused by Mr. Thomas. And it should be made clear that OR group is not indicating that the injuries suffered were, were at the hands of Mr. Thomas. Rather, the injuries were obtained during the um, force incident with Mr. Thomas and may have been suffered while the application of force by officers was being um, committed. In any event, um, secondly, once it was learned that subsequent medical information had failed with certainty to detect the existence of broken bones, in our view, the department would have been better served to produce a clarifying public statement about the new facts. Our group recommends that the consultation